These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Let's start by reviewing the structure of the atom. So the atom is made out of basically protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, where, where are those? What, which parts of the atom are the electrons, protons, and neutrons in? Um, the electrons are on the outside of the atom. Right. And the no, uh, neutrons are found within the nucleus. And then the protons, I believe, are also in the That's right. That sounds good to me. So this is the atom. And this is the nucleus. protons and the neutrons are in the nucleus, and then the electrons are, so to speak, orbiting around the nucleus. Remember that actually it's a little more accurate to say, <coughs> <coughs> to say that the electrons are arranged in shells around the nucleus. So some of the electrons are closer to the nucleus than others. Remember, the shells are quantized. So there's certain distances that the electrons are allowed to orbit at, and other distances the electrons are not allowed to orbit at, roughly speaking. And then inside the nucleus, we have the protons and the neutrons. Let's talk about what the characteristics are of these. What's the charge on an electron? A negative charge. Yeah, negative charge. Now remember that in coulombs, its charge is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And what's the charge on a proton? Uh, it's positive. Positive, and in coulombs it would have the positive, the same magnitude as the electrons, positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. But that's such a small charge that it's really not all that convenient to work with oftentimes. So oftentimes we just say that the electron has a charge of negative 1, and then the proton would have a charge of positive 1. Remember a symbol for that is E. E stands for the charge on an electron. So we might say that an electron has a charge of negative 1 E. And we would say that a proton has a charge of positive 1 E. So if we don't want to work with coulombs, because that would involve working with 10 to the negative 19, we can just use the symbol E. So what does E stand for? E stands for 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. But instead of writing that out, we can just say that that's E, a unit of elementary charge. What's the charge on the neutron? Um, there's no charge. Yeah, no charge on the neutron. Now, how about masses? Do you remember, what's roughly speaking the relationship between the mass of a proton and the mass of a neutron? Um, they should be equal to one That's right. They're not exactly equal, but they're very close. They're very close in mass. So oftentimes, we approximate their masses as equal. And if you look in your inside front cover of your textbook, it tells you what the mass of a proton is. I think it's something like 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Something like 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, and so would be a neutron. But that's so small that oftentimes it's better just to uh, use a, a simpler unit. And the unit that's just like we use E, we could use a unit for mass, we can use U, which is atomic mass units. So a proton has an atomic mass of 1U. But what does U stand for? Well, it stands for something close to 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. But instead of writing that close to 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, it's easier just to write 1U, so this would be the mass. And then the neutron would also be approximately 1U. They're not exactly equal, but they're pretty close. Now, how about the mass of an electron? How does that compare to the protons and the neutrons? Now, the electron is much, much less massive, far less massive. In fact, it's, the mass is smaller by a factor of 1,800. It's about 1,800 times smaller in mass. 
The mass of an electron, if you look that up in your inside front cover, it's 9 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. The mass of the electron is 9 times 10 to the negative 31. We might have already had to use that for some problems last time. We saw it's actually 9.11, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, which means that, again, it is far smaller than the mass on the protons and the neutrons, because those are around 10 to the negative 27. Uh, in fact, it's around 1,800 times smaller. So when people are using atomic mass units, when people are using U, we often approximate the electrons as zero mass. Now, it's important to realize this isn't really accurate. They do have some mass, 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, but compared to the protons and the neutrons, it's negligible. So if you're comparing them to protons and neutrons, we can approximate them as zero. By the way, what's the mass of a photon? Remember what a photon is? Yeah, so that photon is the particle, the light particle. Yeah, it's when we're thinking of the particle characteristics of light. Well, this really does have zero mass. This really would have a mass of zero, not just approximately, but exactly. And also, just for comparison, electrons don't literally have zero mass, but it's much smaller than the protons, so we can approximate it as zero, whereas photons, light really doesn't have any mass. And uh, while we're at it, what's the charge in a photon? Yeah, photons are uncharged. While we're at it, what's the charge on a neutron? There's no charge. So now I think we've, we've labeled all the different particles here. A photon has zero mass and zero charge exactly. An electron has negative one charge and approximately zero mass. A proton has about one mass unit and one charge unit. And a neutron has exactly zero charge and about one mass unit. So, of course, the official units for all of these would be coulombs and kilograms, but oftentimes in nuclear physics we just use U and E for the elementary charge and the atomic mass unit. So remember that U is a unit for charge, I'm uh, sorry, U is a unit for mass, and E is a unit for charge. And there should be a conversion in your inside front cover that tells you how many kilograms there are in a U. And we already know how many coulombs there are in E, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So we might have to do uh, more unit conversions here. Remember that if the atom is neutral, the number of protons has to equal the number of electrons, because otherwise it couldn't be neutral. However, there's nothing that says what the number of neutrons has to be, or at least no simple rule. But it's also important to keep in mind that in these chapters, a lot of the time we're going to be looking at atoms that are not neutral. So that means the number of protons could be way more or way less than the number of electrons. That's a common mistake people make in physics. In chemistry, it's very common to work with neutral atoms or things that only have a plus one or a negative one charge. But in our physics chapters here, we might be working with things where the number of protons is 12 and the number of electrons is one, things with very big charges. So you can't assume that these are going to be neutral anymore. Also, in the nuclear physics chapter, we're basically focusing on nuclei and we just ignore the electrons. Or we might be look, focusing on something that's had the electrons totally stripped away. So we can't assume that we have as many electrons as protons. One more point that is good to have in mind is this picture is not realistic because, in fact, the nucleus is way, way smaller than the atom. In fact, I think the example that I've seen is that if, if the atom was the size of a baseball stadium, the nucleus would be the size of a fly in the center of the stadium. So if you imagine the whole atom as a baseball stadium, the nucleus would be the size of a fly, which means that it's tiny compared to the entire atom. The nucleus is tiny compared to the space that the electrons take up. But remember that almost all the mass is in the nucleus, because the electrons have almost all, no mass. So the electrons take up almost all the space, but they contribute almost none of the mass. And the protons contribute almost none of the space, and they contribute almost all of the mass, which means the nucleus must be very, very dense. The nucleus is very dense, and the rest of the electron is very non-dense. What's the opposite of dense? I don't know. It's the very, very non-dense, low density. This is why sometimes people say that one of the interesting discoveries of physics is that everything is mostly empty space. Things look solid. This looks like a solid blackboard. But actually, it's mainly just gaps between nucleuses. It's mainly empty space between very dense nucleuses. <laughs>